every now and then you see something in life that takes your breath away. And if it's a Mazda, even better. Have you ever seen anything this beautiful? Apart from your wife, of course, but you have to say that by law. The new Mazda 3. I feel like I'm spoiling the moment. Like I should stay completely silent and give you, me and everyone else a moment to just take it all in and enjoy. It doesn't matter where you look at it from. The back, the sides, the front. It's like that perfect combination of elegance, aggressiveness, and just pure beauty. <laughs> I love it. The previous generation Mazda 3 was nice, a bit sporty and good looking. But now they took all those ingredients and dialed them to 11. Look at the, the lights here at the front. You've got daylight LEDs. You've got these side LEDs, which I really love how they look. Of course, you've got a completely new adaptive LEDs. And you've got LED blinkers at the front. And at the back as well. LEDs everywhere. And look how aggressive it looks, even at the back. I've noticed I also become aggressive when the keys to the three were taken away from me. Right now you can get the Mazda 3 with a diesel or a petrol engine. Now this petrol engine does not feature a turbocharger, just like before, and both of them have around 100, 120 horsepower. But what is more important is that this Skyactiv G-Spot will turn into Skyactiv X very soon, because the new Skyactiv X engines are coming and they work on that HCCI thing where they can work as a diesel or as a petrol. So that's gonna be really interesting. It's all new inside as well. The goal was still the luxury of the Mazda 6. It has a new infotainment screen and graphics, infrared eyes that watch your fatigue, and infinitely better cameras around the car. The actual system is now more refined and good looking. The display is higher resolution as well. But Mazda didn't want to put in the same climate control module. It's also new, nicer, more elegant. The seats are wrapped in lovely leather. The five-door version will also have a dark red leather option, while the four-door will have white. And don't think it's just a looker. It's also practical with a reasonable boot. But none of this is important if the car is not nice to drive. That's why I drove the Mazda across a variety of roads. Now 
what you're about to hear is all first impressions of the car. We'll do a proper test very soon, but for this one, first impressions. And they're very, very good. I mean, you've already seen the outside. This car just exudes some kind of, I don't know, sportiness, aggressiveness, but also elegance. It, it's like a big, luxurious Audi. And people will look at you like you are in a big, luxurious Audi. Um, oops, set my limiter wrong. Anyway, even people that, you know, you wouldn't really say are interested in cars, look at it and go, wow. And I agree. And inside here, it's more of the same awesomeness, beauty, elegance, everything. You know, everything is new from the design, from the shapes, from the buttons, from the switches that the buttons use to the materials. It's, it's such a nice, nice, lovely place to be. I love these chrome inserts on the doors and the lovely Bose looking sound system. The switches for the um, windows have such a nice little tactile feel to them. Even, even the little switches for the rear view mirrors have such a cool little click, click, clickety clack that you just want to keep fiddling with them. And then there's the center console. It, it's, it's new and it very much gives you the feeling that this is a bigger car than it is. It, it gives me more of a Mazda 6 feeling with the uh, overall design. And I really like it. It's interesting, it's got new vents, it's got little chrome inserts. And they didn't overdo it with the chrome, that's the nicest thing about it, probably. It's, it's positioned in a way that I don't think would be really a problem with the uh, sun shining in and blinding you, perhaps a little bit, but it's just so nice. The climate controls are sort of tucked in under this uh, leather portion, and uh, the switches are just they're so clickety and nice. Then you've got this big center console. Wow, that guy just ran a red light. That was nice. Uh, the manual six-speed gearbox is lovely. Uh, you've got a new little round button for the infotainment. And of course, the entire infotainment screen is now new. Not only the software, the hardware, it's also the uh, the actual screen is now bigger and much higher resolution and it's very nice it looks more elegant it works better it's just plain nicer and then we come to the instrument cluster now Mazda went for the same thing they did with the Mazda 6 you've got a central smaller uh, digital display which gives you the uh, speedometer and then the current consumption and the range and so on and so forth and a few little other details and info that you can switch here with the button on the steering wheel and it looks very nice it's it has a high contrast high resolution it looks the part and then on the sides you've got a uh, rpm meter or tachometer on the left and on the right you've got your uh, coolant and fuel and I have to say that especially the tachometer at first I really really thought this was this was also a digital display because it's so crisp so nice and sort of very flat looking and I mean that in a good way I don't know what they did but it looks fantastic it really reminds me of the uh, new BMW's analog instruments which do have a bit of a depth to them, but they also look like they're digital when they're not. And then there's also the steering wheel, which is new. It's a very nice and, I mean, it's sort of semi-soft. It really reminds me of the BMW's uh, M steering wheels, which are just fantastic. This is, this is also soft, not quite as soft as the M steering wheel, but it's very nice to the touch, lovely to drive with it. And I've also got plenty of buttons on here to control the various, you know, volume, cruise control, and so on and so forth. And again, Mazda really did a good job selecting the proper switches for these because they're so, you just want to keep pressing them. And the ride. I do have to talk about the ride as well. Despite the fact that this is a bit of a sporty car, the Mazda 3, you know, well, most Mazdas tend to have a bit of a sporty feel to them. 
but I was half expecting by the look of the car, by the, you know, the logic that they want to make it um, with, I was expecting it to be harder on the road than it is. And it actually is very nice and soft. But not soft in a sense that you go into a corner and you think, oh, I better not do that again. No, it's actually nice in the corners when you go a little bit faster. But when you just want to drive comfortably like this or on the, on the motorway, it is soft and supple. And um, the seats are also very nice. They're, they're very comfy. I wouldn't say they're quite as comfortable as the higher end uh, maybe Audi or BMW or the really plush Renault ones with the uh, top equipment levels but they are supportive and nice. I, I will have to drive it a bit more to see just how comfortable they are on longer drives. In this short preview, I didn't really touch upon the very interesting tech this new car uses. That's something we'll look at in the proper test. I don't have the price for you just yet, but even the base Mazda 3 will come standard with navigation, head-up display, LEDs and so on. Basically, I want it. Now.